in this brief segment on uh, predicate logic, I want to do one more example of uh, the difficulty of translating uh, English into formal logic, and in particular quantifiers into formal logic. This is an optional section. It's a potentially confusing example, so you're welcome to skip it, but other people may find it informative. So let's look at uh, this phrase in English where the poet says, all that glitters is not gold. Well, a literal translation of that would be that if we let G be glitters, and I can't use G again, so we'll say AU is gold, then this translated literally would say for every X, G of X, if X is gold, implies that not gold of X. All right, so uh, is that a sensible translation? Well, it's clearly false because gold glitters like gold and you can't say that gold is not gold. So this is not what's meant. It's not a good translation. It doesn't make sense. Uh, well, what is meant? Well, when the poet says all that glitters is not gold, he's really leaving out a key word to be understood from context. All that glitters is not necessarily gold. He's using poetic license. You're supposed to fill in and understand his meaning. And the proper translation would be that it is not true that everything that's gold everything that glitters is gold. It is not the case that for all x, if x glitters, then x is gold. So it's just an example where a literal translation without thinking about what the sentence means and what the, uh, the, the poet who articulated the sentence intended will get you something that's nonsense. It's one of the problems with machine translation from natural language uh, into precise formal language. Okay, let's look at another example that, uh, of the same kind. The poet says this time, there is a season to every purpose under heaven. Um, this is a variant of a biblical phrase. So what does it mean? Well, the literal translation would be, there exists an S that's a season, such that for every P that's a purpose, S is for P. Well, that from the way that quantifiers work means that there's some season, say summer, that's supposed to be good for all purposes. Well, that's not right because summer is not good for snow shoveling. And if your purpose is to shovel snow, then uh, summer will not do for you as a season. So even though it's phrased there is a season to every purpose under heaven, it's not the case that the intended translation is there is a season for every purpose. In fact, the poet really means to flip the quantifiers, which is what's shown here. We're going to switch them around so that we are really saying for every purpose, there is a season such that S is for P. For snow shoveling, winter's good. For planting, spring is good. For leaf watching, fall is good. Uh, and that is, in fact, the intended translation here. Although I remind you that there's a famous uh, a historical man, uh, Sir Thomas More, who was described as a man for all seasons. That would be a case where there was man, uh, one man who was good for all seasons. He was a polymath, uh, a, a writer, a, uh, a cleric, and the Chancellor of England uh, for many years until he had a falling out with Henry VIII, which served him ill. Okay, um, that's the end of those two examples, whose point is just to warn you that translation from English from in into math uh, is not something that can be done in a mindless mechanical way. Uh, sometimes the quantifiers really are meant to go the other way from the way that they literally appear.